Welcome to the Raw and Uncensored Ambitious Podcast. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh, yeah, here I am, the original H-B-I-C, Katie motherfucking Boyd. And on today's episode of the Ambitious Podcast, I'm going to be telling you all about why you're a basic bitch. And then I'm going to give you all of the reasons to get out and away from this average, mediocre, basic ass bitch life so that you can finally step into your power and live the rest of your life, the best of your life by living ambitiously. But before we start, I don't have any ads on the Ambitious Podcast. So the one thing that I ask from all of you out there in Ambitious Land, part of this Ambitious Movement is to share this podcast with as many future ambitious as you can. I don't care if you have to put a note on a raven's claw and send it across the ocean or use smoke signals or an SOS. I don't give a fuck what it is. Just do the do. That's all I ask of you is to share it, share it on your social media, send it in an email, text your friends, just word of mouth, but extra points, obviously, if you tag me on an Instagram post that you're sharing my podcast so I can actually thank you personally because it literally makes my heart sing to know that all of the hundreds and thousands of hours that I have spent over the last 20 plus years years of my life creating this ambitious movement. I know it's paying off. And the more women that join the ambitious movement, the better that Mother Earth will be. Let's be honest. Okay. That's all I ask. So just do it. Stop being a fucking smarmy bitch and just share the ambitious podcast. Okay. So why are you a basic bitch? Por qué? Why are you a basic bitch? Well, I'm going to be saying some things today that are going to probably make you feel really bad about yourself. But remember, I can't make you feel bad about yourself. Only you can allow yourself to feel bad. Okay, so let's just get that on on the table or off the table or under the fucking table or over the table. Just let's get it somewhere. Like, People will come to me all the time and be like, you made me feel this way. And I'm like, you obviously have no sovereign fucking control of your life if you are like, you made me feel this way. I didn't make you feel any way, bitch. You obviously have no fucking control of your life that you're allowing someone that you don't even fucking know to make you feel any sort of way. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, just turn it off because you're probably going to be a basic bitch for the rest of your life. And that's okay. Get the fuck out of people's way like me that don't desire to be a basic bitch. We in a bitches land Our number one sole desire is to be the most ambitious HBIC that we can be before we shuffle off this mortal coil because uh, taxes and death are the only two things that are promised to us. And I already am paying my taxes and I will die someday and I want to leave a legacy and I don't want people to forget who the fuck that I was. And I want my voice to ring in the people's ears for eternity. I mean, think of all the authors that we read to this day that are hundreds of years old because they made an impact, because they got up every day to leave a legacy. And that's what I desire to do. I do it through my podcast. I do it through my app. I do it through the events that I have. And I do it through my book. And I do it through my coaching, right? I know that when I die, I will have left a mark on so many people's lives And that's why I get up day after day, even though I don't even have to do this and do this because it brings so much to my life and so much fulfillment and so much joy. And I know that it's only going to help more and more and more people to live their best lives. Okay. So why are you a basic bitch? So I pretty much 
was doing some channeling work this morning um, when I was having my coffee and I was doing my ambituals. And I came up with all of these really interesting things that I channeled. And a lot of this stuff, like I said, you're going to listen to it and you're going to be like, oh my God, that's me. Oh my God, that's me. Oh my God, that's me. If you keep saying over and over and over again while you're listening to this podcast, oh my God, that's me. It's time to wake the fuck up once and fucking for all and change your motherfucking life because no one's coming to save you, bitch. I hate to say it, but no one's coming to fucking save you. They don't fucking care. No one gives a fuck. Not even the people that say they love you really give a fuck because at the end of the day, everyone's just trying to do their best for themselves. Let's be honest. So you have to give a fuck about you and you have to give a fuck about your precious human life or not, or not. I don't really give a fuck. I'm not here to talk to the people that don't want to step up. I'm here to talk to the people that are teetering right on the edge and that they know that there's more to this life than just this boring ass, average, mediocre, basic bitch existence. Okay, so as I'm going through this list, and you're like, oh my God, that's me. Well, I'm going to give you a bunch of tools to combat it. And that's half of the issue because I can give you the tools, but you have to use the tools. It's like having a toolbox and you're like, okay, I need to bang a fucking nail in the wall to hang a picture. Do you get a Phillips head screwdriver? Do you get a wrench or do you get a motherfucking hammer? You get the goddamn hammer. You have to choose the appropriate tool for the job. And most of you will listen to what I say. You'll get all pumped up. Your nipples will get hard. Your panties will get wet. And you'll never fucking do anything about it. And here lies the problem. So I'm going to challenge you at the end of this podcast to really step the fuck up and do the goddamn work or not. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Okay? I don't care. God put me on this earth just to drop the knowledge and you're the ones that have to do the fucking work, okay? All right, so here's a bunch of different reasons. I didn't number them, okay? Because I always get myself in trouble when I say, this is the top 20 reasons and then I do 21 and someone emails me and they're like, "Um, I don't know if you didn't know, but you did 21 and not 20. Fuck you, shut the fuck up. Take a seat, take several seats actually. You're lucky I'm even fucking doing this, so... Kiss my fat Portuguese ass. All right, here it is. Like I said, I'm not numbering them, so don't get, don't get fucking all up in arms. The first thing is, the reason why you're a basic bitch is you don't even believe that you can do the thing that you desire to do in the first place. And when you don't believe that you can do the thing that you desire to do, you become a self-fulfilling prophecy, okay? I have so many people that come to me and they're like, Katie, I just, I want to do this thing and I want to do this thing and I want to do this thing. And I'm like, then do it, bitch. Do it. Oh, well, I don't. And they have all these fucking excuses. And I'm like, oh my God, Jesus Christ, just fucking crawl back in the hole that you once came from, honestly. Like, I don't fucking feel bad for people. I don't give a fuck. This is survival of the motherfucking fittest. This is not, you know, tweak my clit. This is fucking survival of the fittest. So the first reason is you don't even fucking believe you can in the first place. So if you come to me and you want to be coached and you have a dream, a goal, an aspiration, and you really truly don't believe that you can do in the first place, don't waste my motherfucking time. Don't waste my motherfucking time. Because I'm telling you right now, the shift is so motherfucking deep that if you don't make a fucking decision now, like in the next couple of months, you will never fucking change. And I'm talking from an energetic, esoteric, spiritual, cosmic standpoint. I'm not talking about like, oh, on September 22nd, 2022, if you don't make a jump, you're never going to make the jump. No, I'm talking about it's an energy And it's an era that we've all stepped into. Some of us not knowing that we're in this new era. And you're like trying to just like pull your fucking pud. And it's like, dude, you have to do things. You have to do the do. You have to put your fucking money where your mouth is. You have to back up your shit. So if you don't even believe in the first place that you can do it, fuck, take a seat. Take a fucking seat, honestly. 
The next one is, oh, this is so big, dude. This is one of the biggest ones that I see and it's like so embarrassingly sad and it's just like, and it's so easy to combat and people still don't want to do it. And it's because you're afraid to be judged, to stand out, to be talked about, to receive negative feedback or even be canceled. You know, some people say to me like, oh my God, Katie, you say the craziest shit. Aren't you afraid to be canceled? Bitch, I already canceled myself. I'm uncancelable. I'm uncancelable, okay? I don't give a fuck what people say about me. And when you don't give a fuck about what people say about you, you become so fucking dangerous and you become so powerful. And when you don't care about being judged by strangers or your family or your colleagues or your best friend, if you're not afraid to stand out of the crowd, If you're not afraid to receive negative feedback, and if you even receive negative feedback, you're like, ah, whatever, moving on, moving on. Like there's a quote, um, it's one of my favorite quotes in the world, and it really puts a lot of shit into perspective um, for me. And I'm paraphrasing it, but it was by Winston Churchill. And he said, if I had to kick every barking dog on the way to where I was going, I would never get there. Let me say that again. So clean the fucking potatoes out of your ears. If I had to kick every barking dog on the way to where I was going, I would never get there. Could you imagine like I do a lot of videos right on YouTube, on Instagram and on my app and I literally have no bra on. Okay. My jugs are just hanging down to my fucking kneecaps. I haven't brushed my teeth. I'm in like my ethereal moo moo. I have coffee breath. I have sleepy seeds in my eyes. And I'm just like inspired because I was doing my ambituals and spirit was like working through me. And I'm like, I have to fucking get on the ones and twos. And I need to like just say what the fuck I'm going to say. And people are just like, oh my God, like, aren't you afraid? Like what people are going to say? Aren't you this? Aren't you that? Like, what, what if people say like, you don't know what you're talking about? What if they do? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. God is working through me, okay? Like God is going ahead of me and making all the crooked places straight. And I know that when people come for me, it's because I'm actually being polarizing and I'm actually lighting the fire and being the catalyzer of a great shift on this planet. I'm not fucking here to be mediocre, guys. I'm not here to be basic and I'm not here to be fucking average. I'm here to be the best motherfucking bitch that I can be. And if you don't wanna be that, I don't give a shit, but I'm going to do it regardless. And people always say like, oh, like this person said this about me and this person said that about me. And I'm going to just read um, just an excerpt from one of my favorite speeches from Theodore Roosevelt. And Brene Brown talks a lot about, a lot, a lot, a lot about this quote. And it's called The Man in the Arena. It is not the critic who counts not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Pretty much what he's fucking saying is, if you're not in the motherfucking arena doing the do, I don't give a fuck about what you say. That's it. That is it. So we have to really get over this whole, like, I don't want to be judged. I don't want to stand out. I I don't want to be controversial. You know who becomes the game changers in the industry, the controversial people. And I I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, it's not good to rock the boat. Yes, it is. The boat needs to flip the fuck over. It needs to hit an iceberg and it needs to capsize. 
The boat no longer works, okay? We need to create a new boat. The next reason why you just are a basic bitch is you're jealous. When I was a little girl, my grandmother would always say to me, jealousy is a, is a sickness. Get well soon. It's a disease. It's a sickness. If you're constantly comparing yourself to others and like, oh, why does she have this? And why does she have that? Blah, blah, blah. You know many people say to me, oh, it must be nice to be you. Well, you don't understand what it's like. It's like, honey, I grew up with nothing. Like, do you think I was born with a silver fucking spoon in my mouth? No, everything that I have is the back-breaking, soul-sucking, energy-draining, butt-fucking, hard-ass work that me, and then, because I'm part of a team, my husband has done in the last 25, 30 years of our lives. Okay? So stop being jealous of people Use those people as fuel to be like, wow, if she can do it, I can do it. You know how I always talk about standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Like, don't be jealous. Don't be a hater. Be like, wow, this is so inspirational. Like, this girl or this this guy came from nothing. I can do the same thing. If it's been done before, it could be done again. The next reason why you're a basic bitch is you don't take risks and you don't play big. The greater the risk, the higher the reward. The greater the risk, the higher the reward. Take during COVID when I was going on a world tour for my book, okay? World tour. I was starting in Paris and we were just going from place to place to place doing book signings and speaking engagements and all these things. And this little old global pandemic happened and I had to freaking rearrange my whole entire strategy that I had taken about three years of my life to create, to make the connections, to plan the travel, to plan all the gigs, to do all the stuff. Because remember, it's like a two-man band. It's only me and my online business manager, Kim Fox. I don't have a fucking team. Yeah, I have people that help me do different things, but like I don't have a team, right? And I said, okay, how the fuck am I going to do this? How am I going to get this book in people's hands? And I said, fuck it. I'm going to do a bitch box. And I created a box and I designed the beautiful boxes and I designed all and curated all the things that were going to go in the boxes. And we had a book club, a 12-week book club. And I sold that thing out three times in a row. I made so much money. I have friends that are authors that like they just write book after book after book after book and they don't make shit. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to just take this risk. And if I fail and I fall on my face. I fail and I fall on my face. Like I, of course I was scared. Of course I was uncomfortable, but it's the risky shit. And when you're just playing so big and you think so grand that those yield the biggest fucking rewards. The next reason why you're a mediocre motherfucker is you don't want it bad enough. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I want this and I want that. And it's like, and you don't even fucking want to do the work. Like, you don't want to do the fucking work. You don't want to do the work. You don't really want it bad enough. You don't want it so bad that it keeps you up at night and it wakes you up in the morning and all you think about it is that. Like, all you think about is that one fucking thing that you desire and it burns in your belly. You're like, oh, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No big whoop. Loser. You're a fucking loser if you think like that. And I love this little excerpt from a motivational uh, talk by one of my favorites, Les Brown. So I want to just read this little, this little excerpt from one of his motivational talks because I think this is just so perfect in this moment when I'm talking about not wanting it bad enough. So listen to me. This is what Les is saying. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, if you simply go after that thing that you want with all your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity, 
If neither cold poverty, famine, nor gout, sickness, nor pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim, you beseech and beset it with the help of God, you will get it. Listen to those words on loop if you have to, but that is the fucking energy that you must bring to conquering and achieving and aspiring to have everything that you dream about and desire. The next reason why you're a basic bitch is just fucking lazy. If, dude, fucking, if you came to my house and you followed me the fuck around for a day, you'd be so motherfucking tired, you would literally shit in your own pants. You would just fart and just shart yourself. Like, I wake up in the morning and I fucking hit the ground running and I don't stop until I'm fucking done. I don't stop when I'm tired. I don't stop when I don't feel well. I don't stop when I my butthole itches. I don't stop when I have my period. I don't stop if I have a sore throat. I don't stop if I'm itchy, hungry. Doesn't fucking matter. I don't stop. And that's why I can put out so much because I am just like, I, I'm a sick fuck. You have to be so hungry. You have to be so motivated. You have to be so determined. You have to be so fucking tenacious that it doesn't matter what you feel like. You're going to execute over emotion and feelings every fucking time. Every time. The next reason you're a basic bitch is you compare yourself. You compare yourself. I can't tell you how many people I coach that was like, well, so-and-so's doing this and I saw so-and-so do this and I saw so-and-so do that and this person wrote a book and this person has a podcast and this person is doing um, reels every day and this person is doing lives every day and this person is doing emails and all this shit. And I'm like, what do you want? What do you feel will light you up? What do you feel will make you feel whole? Because it's not someone else's life. Yes, of course, you can use other people as inspiration. Like, oh, wow, this motivational speaker did this event or this motivational speaker did 30 days of lives and really just like served their community and gave extreme value. Like I could maybe do that, but you don't compare yourself to the person. You don't say, well, this person has that and then I need to do that. That is gonna bite you in the motherfucking ass. Every time I've ever done that in my life, I end up living someone else's life and I'm fucking miserable, miserable. So many people want to coach with me. They want to do a very high container of mentorship with me. And they just think that like by me doing mentorship with them, that through osmosis, they're going to like learn all my tricks and all my secrets. It's like, bitch, there is no tricks. There are no secrets. There is no magic pill. It's getting up every fucking day and doing the same shit over and over and over and over and over and over and over until you just fall into your fucking bed at night. I get up every day and I fucking suck the marrow out of life. And you have to stop comparing yourself to other people because everyone is different. Everyone is bringing a different energy to the world. You know, again, it's nice to be inspired, but it's not okay to compare. This is a really good one. And I think some of you won't understand it, but I'm just going to say it. You take the scraps. Instead of going out there like the lioness that you are and just roaring and being like, get the fuck out of my way. This is my fucking dinner. You're just like, oh, whatever's just left over. You know, if there's like a hyena foot or like, you know, a nostril, I'll just chew on that. I'll just nibble on that little, I'll just nibble on that a little bit later. No, bitch. You take what the fuck you want. And you leave the fucking scraps to the bitches that are scrap bitches. I am not taking the scraps. I get out there and I fucking get what I want. You see me. It's like, oh, I'm not staying at the Hojo. I'm staying at the motherfucking Four Seasons. I'm staying at the Ritz-Carlton. I want opulence. I want abundance. My, My desire is wealth. And I want people to serve me and fall all over themselves to do so and to make me happy and to please me. And I only... My only standards are the highest level of everything. And I am not a fucking afraid to say it. And that's why I have a life where I am experiencing that. So if you want to just keep taking the scraps like the little honey badger that you are, then fucking take them. Clean up the scraps. Pick my bones after I've eaten all the good meat. That's fine. But don't ever look at me and expect me to do that. 
The next reason you're a basic bitch is you think that su- success is like this destination. So you think like one day you wake up and you're just like, oh, angels came down and teabagged me. And now I'm living my best life. I'm a success. I'm a success. And all the fucking trumpets are playing and the harp is... No. Success is every day waking up and just doing a little bit more, just doing a little bit more, a little bit extra, just perfecting, fine tuning and streamlining just a little bit more. And that's what success is. It's not like this day you wake up and you're like, oh my God, I'm just, I'm a success. No, that's not how it works. I fucking wish. It's not how it works. And if you think that that's how it works, you're going to be severely let down and disappointed. The next reason why you're a basic bitch is you don't use your fucking imagination. God gave you this imagination, right? I I love that song, Imagination, from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Remember that song? Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. That is the energy that every day I wake up and I live in. If you look at my home, if you look at the way I dress, the way I carry myself, it's very... It's very whimsical. It's very like, like I'm just a big girl that still is living in my little girl life. Like I want to be surrounded by rainbows and unicorns and pink and opulence and beauty. And like, if you notice like everything about my home and about my outside of my home and about my wellness center, it's all like these parts of me from my childhood that I kind of like put in a pot and created this life, you know, like it's an inspiration from movies and, and books and cartoons from when I was a little girl. Like I loved Punky Brewster. I loved the Care Bears. I loved Strawberry Shortcake, right? I loved Beetlejuice and all of like the Adams family. And I loved like Lisa Frank and all like that. If you come to my home, that's what you walk into. My life is a creation of all the imagin- imagination energy that I've ever had. And people just don't use their imagination. They just like, everything is gray. Everything is boring. They're just like, this is just what the hand, this is the hand that I've been dealt. And this is just what I have to deal with. No, you don't. You have no fucking standards. And and imagination is of the divine. Imagination is from God. It's from spirit. It's inspired. So you have to open yourself up to that energy. The next reason is you have no purpose. You don't even know why the fuck you're here. You don't even, and and furthermore, you don't even give yourself enough time to sit and go, why am I here? What, What am I here for? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to accomplish? Who am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to show up? You just get up every day and you're like, time to make the donuts. Time to make the donuts. Time to make the donuts. It's like, fuck me, man. If you if you just fucking live every day like glazing those donuts, you're gonna be you're gonna look like the fucking guy from the old Dunkin' Donuts commercials from the eighties. If you're if you're young and you're listening to that, go Google that motherfucker. He's not sexu- sexy. You have no purpose. The next thing is you actually do everything in your life to impress and not to impact. What do I mean by that? When Let's talk about like business for a second because I do a lot of business coaching for women in health professions in the fitness world in the spiritual world, okay? People will um, show up on Instagram or they'll show up on Facebook or they'll send out an email or they'll post or whatever and it's all to impress other people and not to, not to impact people. And I always tell my, my girls that I coach, if you want to be wealthy and abundant and have the life of a 2% person, because there's only 2% in the world that live like like I do, you have to say every moment that I come on and I speak or I write or I show up, it has to educate people, it has to entertain them, and it has to empower them. The three E's, entertain, educate, and empower. And if all your content that you create and all the energy that you generate has those three things in it, you cannot be broke, you cannot be mediocre, you cannot be average, and you cannot be basic. But you're showing up to impress people instead of impact them. Like last week, I had days of five-figure days, okay? That's how you generate real wealth and abundance is to like have these days where it's like you can't even spend the money as fast as it's coming in. 
And I said it on my Instagram. I said, like, this is the day that I had. And so many people were like, stop being a braggy, bragger and shit like that. It's like, dude, you should be like, wow, this bitch is making moves and like it's inspiring me to do the same. And when I show up, I do it to impact people, to motivate them, to show them a different way. And you're not doing that. And then you're like, why am I broke? Why do I have no clients? Why do I have a mediocre life? Why am I a basic bitch? That's why. The next reason is you choose distraction 99% of the time. 99% of the time you choose fucking distraction. 99%. Can you imagine 99% of the time you choose distraction? So you wake up in the morning, you're like, okay, I'm going to get all these things done. I'm going to get all these things done, right? And then you do like three things and the rest of the shit, you just like, ah, fuck it. I'll just put it to tomorrow. And your whole life is just pushing shit to the next day, to the next day, to the next day. Well, you know what, bitch? One day you're going to wake up and it's going to be the last time you put your fucking thong on. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be fucking morbid, but it's true. It's the last day you're going to put your fucking thong on up your ass. So if you really sit and think of all the ways that you're being distracted, okay, you'll be like, holy shit, no wonder why I'm not living a 2% life, right? You're like sitting down to do work and then all of a sudden you pick up the phone. You're like, oh, I wonder what everyone's doing on Instagram. I wonder who's, you know, dancing on TikTok. I wonder who, what grandma's complaining about politics on Facebook, and then you do that for a couple of minutes and you go, oh shit, I got to go back to work. And then you go back to work and then you're like, oh shit, this is happening. I'm hungry. I got to piss. Like you don't force yourself to sit down and do the thing. And the reason why I'm so successful is I can combat distraction better than the average bear. The next thing is you haven't named it. You know, my husband always says you got to name it to claim it. You don't even know what the fuck you want in the first place. So how do you expect the universe and God to go to work and create and curate this life for you and send you what you desire if you don't even know what the fuck you want? The universe is not a mind reader, dude. Wake up and smell the queefs, okay? You have to name it to claim it. You have to say, this is what I desire and I don't give a fuck come hell or high water. This is what I'm getting. I teach this in A28P. I teach this in Ambitious Academy. I teach this in my book. I've talked about it on the podcast a million times. Your Ambitious Abundance Affirmation or A3, AAA. Ambitious Abundance Affirmation. Every day and every night you say that thing. Come hell or high water. I don't care if you drink 32 martinis. You do that because you're conjuring, you're spelling, you're casting spells by saying those things. Like come hell or high water. This is what I am attracting into my life and that's it. And there's failure is not a fucking option. So you have to name it to claim it. The next thing is you're actually afraid of failure. Who gives a fuck if you fail? And that ties back to what I was talking about before. It's because you're actually afraid of failing because you're like, oh, people are going to talk about me. They're going to judge me. They're going to say all this shit about me. Like who gives a fuck? The only way that you learn is through failure. My biggest educational lessons in my life have been when I've fallen flat on my motherfucking face and made a total jackass of myself because it was so uncomfortable and it was so embarrassing. It was so jarring. It was so scathing that I was like, I will never in a million fucking years ever f allow myself to get into this situation where I ever feel these feelings again. And guess what? It never happened again. I learned my fucking lesson. So the next one is, you think that like success and having this like 2% life and this being this ambitious HBIC is about talent. I'm going to tell you this right now. I will outwork your fucking talent any day of the fucking week. I will outwork your talent any fucking day of the week. I have incredible people in my life that are so talented. They're so fucking talented. And guess what? They don't do the work. And I will surpass them every fucking time because I realize that hard work outshines talent every day of the week. The next reason you're a basic bitch is you take the fucking easy way out. Like, you're like, if it's uncomfortable, it's not for me. If it's painful, it's not for me. If it makes me feel just a little bit weird or a little bit, oh, it's not for me. Well, then you're never going to have a 2% ambitious life. You're never going to be the HBIC if you don't get uncomfortable. The hardest things you do, 
the most uncomfortable things that you do, the most painful things that you do, yield the greatest results. You know, in H2HP, we do a lot of intermittent and extended fasting, and people are like, I'm so afraid to fast. I, I think it's unhealthy. De-de-de-de-de. Even though I give them all the science, all the medical reports, all the shit to prove it, to back it up, and they're still like, no. And I'm like, then just be unhealthy. Live with chronic disease. Live with metabolic syndrome. Live with thyroid problems and, and PCOS and fertility issues and skin issues and um, inflammation and rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune disease and, and just live with being a fat fuck. I don't really care because I'm just going to keep getting hotter and younger looking and better and I'm going to age like a fine wine while you all look like California fucking raisins. I heard it through the grapevine. No, thank you. No, thank you. Dude, how did we even evolve our species on this planet if we were if we were eating six meals a day? Give me a fucking break. But people don't want to do it. They don't want to take they want to take the easy way out. They don't want to do the hard, uncomfortable shit. They don't want to fucking sacrifice. Then get the fuck out of the HBIC's way. Just be a basic bitch, but get out of the way. Move, bitch. Get out the way. Get out the way. Bitch, get out the way. Just get out the fucking way. Just move. Just move please. Actually, I'm not even going to beg you. I'm just going to push you the fuck out of the way. The next one is you have no consistency. Like every day you're like, you know, I'm a plastic bag drifting through the wind. La 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 la. Or like that song, all we are is dust in the wind. That's an old one. My dad used to make me listen to that when I was a little girl. Dude, you're not just in the wind. You're not a fucking plastic bag at the goddamn market basket parking lot just floating around sad, wet, couple holes in you. You're not that person. It's only you are if you decide to be. And when you don't have consistency, you're not constantly flexing that muscle and building that muscle up of greatness. Consistency over time is what creates an abundant lifestyle. The 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 money and the life that I'm reaping now probably started about nine fucking years ago. Go back to my podcast with my shaman, Kaylin Rain, and talk about the Cavalarian cycle and see where you are in your Cavalarian cycle. Right now, if you're listening to this in real time, it's 2022 and I'm in my year nine of my nine-year Cavalarian cycle. What am I doing right now? I'm reaping all the rewards of all the last eight years of hard fucking work that I've invested into the ambitious brand and motivating people and creating this, this movement. And now next year, I'm going to go into my one year, my first year of my Cavalarian, and I'm going to create a whole new genre, a whole new evolution of what Ambitious is going to be, right? And consistency is key, like I said, and that's where like things like the bitch list come into play. Remember, I talk about this all the time where every day you wake up and you say, okay, what's my bitch list? You choose five things, choose those five things that are your things that you know, if you do these five things today... It doesn't matter what else you do. You're going to create greatness, right? You're going to create greatness. So for me, like my bitch list is like every day, it has to do with like what I'm doing for my nutrition. So like if I'm doing OMAD or if I'm doing a 48-hour fast or if I'm doing a 72-hour fast or whatever I'm doing, right? So my meal plan for the day, what it is, that's number one. Number two, my movement plan for the day. So whether it's like an hour cardio or if it's an hour cardio in like a 55-minute Pilates session or a half an hour lifting or a 45-minute yoga session or I'm going for a hike or whatever, right? That's my second thing. My third thing in my bitch list is my spiritual practices, So I'm doing my breath work. I'm doing my meditation. I'm doing my morning ambituals. I am doing my sound healing at night, right? Like those, that's my, that's my third thing. My fourth thing is my hydration and my supplementation. You know, I'm very rigid with what I put into my body for like my hydration. And I'm also very rigid with my supplements because I believe in my heart that, you know, living in this new, era, we're not getting all of the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals that we need. So I'm very OCD about my supplementation. And then my fifth thing can be like a a one that kind of comes in and out, right? Like my fifth thing on my bitch list could be, you know, 
um, batch of four podcasts that day. Or, you know, it could be um, it could be a day where I'm doing my mentorship program and I'm doing one-on-one um, mentorship calls or meetings at my wellness center, Katie Boyd's Myth- Misfit Club. Or it could be a sales thing. I could be launching a program. So I'm very, you know, head down, balls deep into like launching my program, right? So, and that's the five things. Now, if I get all those five things done every fucking day, you're telling me I'm not going to feel like a badass bitch, but you have no consistency because you don't even know what you're supposed to be consistent with. So the bitch list is huge. The next thing is you don't put enough time and effort into self-education. Listen, no one loves just mindless, booby, fucking ding dong, stupid fucking TV more than I do. I love to watch The Real Housewives. I love, you know, me some Netflix. I love that shit. But I only use TV as like a reward. Like I did all this today. Now I can sit in my outdoor kitchen with a glass of rosé if I'm having a cocktail, and I'll watch, you know, The Real Housewives, but just one show. I'm not going to do like a marathon when I know I haven't worked out, when I know I didn't meditate, when I know I didn't do anything on my bitch list. And then what I do, if we can just go back to the bitch list for a second, and this does tie into what I'm talking about, let's just say every day you have your five things on your bitch list, right? And every day for a month, at the end of the day, After you finished all of your bitch list, you put a big red B in your notebook or your journal and your planner. And that big red B says, bitch, you did it. You won the day. You did everything on your bitch list. And then if you at the end of the month go back through your bitch list in your planner or your journal or your notebook and there's more Bs than not, that's how you start to live an ambitious life. But if you, I know a lot of you out there, you don't have any Bs. You always are missing one or two things in your everyday life. And then you're like, why is my life suck? Why do I feel like a bag of smashed assholes every day? Like, why, 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 why am I a basic bitch? Because you're not being consistent and you are just like putting stupid, frivolous shit in front of the most important things like, you know, scrolling on social media, like watching TV all fucking day like wasting your damn time on shit that will never matter, okay? Now listen, I'm not one of those type of motivators that's like, you can never watch TV, you can never have a drink, you can never go out with your friends. But if you're focused more on that shit than you are the most important things, which is the six life makers, then you're probably not gonna be ambitious. And that's fine. Not everyone was put on this earth to have an ambitious life. But I'm gonna, come hell or high water, that's just, that's just, there's no fucking other option. So think about self-education. What does that mean? Maybe it's reading self-help or motivational books. Maybe it's listening to things on YouTube or podcasts that are super motivational, right? Maybe it's buying a program or a protocol, whether it's with Ambitious or some other, you know, motivational coach type person that helps you learn new things and helps motivate you and helps keep you accountable, right? And that's why I'm such a psychopath when it comes to not allowing any space in my mind because if you've ever listened to or read the book Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, you know, the devil keeps you what he calls drifting, which is just a fancy word for not living life ambitiously in so many words. He keeps you drifting by distracting you, right? By having like fear of all these different things. So, what I do is I never allow my mind to go idle, right? Isn't it like the old, the old adage is like um, idle hands is the devil's work. As soon as I start like just kind of spacing out, that's when the negative voice comes in my head. That's like, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not this enough. You're not that enough. So every moment of every day from the moment I wake up till the time I go to bed, I'm filling the space in my mind with health and wealth and abundance, and motivation, and positivity, and inspiration, and empowerment, and I'm educating myself. I am never allowing space for the devil, or the judgmental fuck faces, or the no good, good for nothing, do nothing, judgmental bitches to come into my fucking mind. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen because the devil comes in and the devil sounds like this. Oh, just, just treat yourself. 
Just treat yourself. Just have that cookie. Oh, girl, it's not a big deal. Just have a glass of wine. Oh, just skip your workout. Oh, you don't need to join A to 8P. That's, that's a waste of money. You can do this on your own. Oh, you don't have to, you don't have to go over to the ambitious app. You don't have to surround yourself by a, a bunch of other like-minded, positive women. No, come on. Just be, just be a lazy, fat fuck. You're, you're fine. You're just a little chubby. You're not fat. You're not fat. Fuck you. Fuck you. I will not allow it in my mind. I rebuke you. I will not allow it. And that's why I'm saying educate yourself. The next thing is you have a plan B. If you have a plan B, it's constantly forevermore going to distract from your plan A. Again, not to beat a dead horse, but I'm going to beat that motherfucker. That's why it's so important to know your ambitious abundance affirmation. Because in the ambitious abundance affirmation, I say my faith and my focus are so strong that there are no other alternatives. That means there's no plan B. Like I will achieve this. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be this year, but it's going to be some time before I shuffle off this mortal coil, period. And in the ambitious abundance affirmation, we do put time stamps on um, on things because it's Parkinson's law. If you give yourself like this open-ended time to, to complete a task or to achieve something, it's going to take longer than if you put a time stamp on something. The next one is you're afraid of success. I kind of touched upon before you're afraid of failure, but it's really weird with all the women that I coach, especially my mentorship women that I have like very personal relationships with, so much of them are not afraid of failure. So much of them are afraid of success. They're afraid of like, if I succeed, if I become healthy, if I become wealthy, if I go to the next level, the people that were in my life all these years, whether it's my mom and dad, my friends, my family, my husband, my significant other, my children, they're not going to like it. What are, what are they going to say? Because that's scary for them. That's scary for them because I'm not going to be the same person I was. So then what happens is they subconsciously self-sabotage because at the end of the day, when they peel the onion, they're actually afraid of success because they're afraid that they won't be liked and loved anymore. And guess what? Who gives a fuck? You don't even fucking like or love yourself. Who cares who likes and loves you if you don't fucking like and love yourself? The next one is you're waiting for the right time. Bitch, there is no fucking right time. Do it now. Do it now. Stop what you're doing right now and go do the thing. There is no right time. I'm around so many fucking people that are like, oh, I'm just a perfectionist. I'm just a perfectionist. I fucking hate that. I fucking hate that. I fucking hate it so much. I'm just a perfectionist. No, bitch. You're not a perfectionist. You're fucking scared. Because perfectionism is fear with like a better wig and like some pink lipstick. It's still fear. If you peel the onion, perfectionism is always like, I'm afraid to put this out because it's not perfect and people are going to judge me and it might fail and that, 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 that. So I won't do it at all. So there's never a right time. Do it now. Do it messy. And you can always go back and streamline and fix and curate and just make it better. I mean, that's what I've done with all of my programs over the years. I've never been ready to launch anything and I just do it. I have made millions of dollars selling programs that aren't even, are, have not even been created. <laughs> okay. Like I'm being totally transparent here. I don't give a fuck. So take a, a, like a, a page out of my playbook. Do it messy. Don't wait for the right time. Okay. This is a huge one. This is fucking huge. I have two more. You have way too much time on your hands. In the next podcast, I'm going to break something down for you that's going to blow your fucking mind. And you're going to be like, what? What? Wait for it. I'm telling you, it's going to blow your fucking mind. But you have way too much time on your hands. Like I was saying before, you cannot allow any idle time because as soon as you have idle time, that's when the devil's going to come in and you're going to start self-doubting and you're going to start second guessing yourself right? Now, I'm not saying never have fun, but like, for example, I had my shaman and his wife, who is a feng shui master, Ginny Rain and Kaylin Rain, both have been on the podcast. If you haven't listened to those podcasts, go back and check them out. They're so interesting. They came over the other night um, with two of my other friends, Ed and Kelly Gallagher, who um, are just incredible humans. And I said to myself, okay, your friends are coming over. You're going to make this beautiful dinner. 
We dined outside under the moon by candlelight. It was gorgeous. Like the, you know, the crickets were cr- just making their little noises and it was just so fucking beautiful. Okay. Now, most people would be like, well, Katie, you're, you're just chilling. You're just hanging with your friends. No, it was very intentional. Ginny and Kaylin, who are my elders in the spiritual community, were telling us the most incredible stories of all of their travels all over the world, doing all this spiritual work. And my other friends, Ed and Kelly, were telling us all these amazing stories as well. Like, it was super intentional time spent in leisure. I wasn't just like, let's just get white girl wasted. Woo, show us your tits. No, I was like, sitting at dinner and we were eating slowly and we were just like, it was so delicious and it was such a beautiful night and the conversations were incredible and it was just super high, high vibrational and fifth dimensional. Like, I'm not saying never have fun. I'm saying do it with intention. You know, if you're going to watch TV for an hour, say, Hey, I'm going to give myself a break. I'm going to let my head kind of like just go zone out a little bit. And I'm just going to like, let it cool down and I'm just going to laugh at like, you know, Lisa Rinna yelling at fucking Garcelle or whatever on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I'm just going to like do my thing. And then after you go, okay, now it's time. I'm done with that. I had my little leisurely, intentional leisurely time. I'm going to go back to work or I'm going to go back to doing whatever else I have to do. But you have way too much fucking time on your hands. I'm going to tell you in the next podcast all about it. It's going to blow your mind. You're going to feel like a fucking real ragamuffin. And I hope that that's going to also help you get your shit together. And last but not least, you're a basic bitch because you hang out with a bunch of basic bitches. Remember, you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. So if you're spending time with a bunch of basic bitches, it probably means you're going to be the fifth basic bitch. Just saying. That's why it's so important to join programs like Ambitious Academy, to do things like a to 8 p to come to events like Bitchapalooza, to come over to the Ambitious app. All by the way, all the links are in the show notes wherever you're consuming this podcast to sign up for the waitlist for A to 8 p to buy the last one or two tickets for Bitchapalooza that are, that's happening January 6th, 7th, and 8th of 2023. To join Ambitious Academy, to do, you know, fun events and just have camaraderie with other women who are on your level or greater. I only hang out with women who are on my level or greater, period. That's it. Sorry to say, but if like you're not vibing at my fucking level, I'm not going to probably give you the time of day. I'll coach you. I'll help you. I'll inspire you. I'll motivate you. You can join my programs. You can do all those things, but I'm probably not going to be going away to Bora Bora with you. Probably not going to have you over my home for dinner. Probably not going to chill with you. And that's okay. It's not that I feel like I'm better than every, anybody, even though I am. <laughs> Let's be honest. I am. I am better than most. And you should want to be too. There's no fucking shame in your game to want to be better. We're in this society right now where we're all like, oh, we don't want to be too big because we don't want to be canceled or we don't want people to think that we're assholes and all the shit. Fuck it. Is that energy helping us be ambitious? No, it's fucking not. So get your fucking head out of your ass and be fucking ambitious or not. Be a basic bitch, but just get out of my fucking way and get out of the way of all the other women who are showing up day after day to be their most ambitious selves. Okay. Next week's podcast, I'm going to give you the actual ways to combat this basic bitch bullshit and really truly call yourself to the carpet and start doing the things that you know that you need to do to be the HBIC of your magical life or not. But please shut the fuck up. Stop fucking complaining about your basic bitch existence if you don't want to do anything about it. In the meantime, stay ambitious. Don't forget to share this with everybody and their mother. And I'll see you next Tuesday.